Yeah, 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 Exactly as predicted, quoted Old Testament texts. Old Testament texts are not the texts of the New Covenant. Every Christian understands our faith yeah! by a covenant system. However, he quotes Old Testament texts. He gave references, but he didn't actually quote them. I would like to hear him quote them rather than just give their references. But ladies and gentlemen, no Christian lives by the Old Testament law because the Old Testament law is fulfilled in the New Covenant. So his criticism he needs to take to the Jewish rabbis, not to the Christian evangelists. His comparison is a false one. But what did he do in defending his Quran? He, he basically said that it's okay to beat women so long as you don't bruise them. Did you hear him say that? Yeah. But let's quote Sahih al-Bukhari, the Sahih Bukhari that he uses to understand his Quran. Sahih al-Bukhari records that one of the wives of the Muslims came to Aisha complaining about her husband. She wanted to be divorced from him because he was impotent. No, the Aisha said it was the custom of women in the Muslim community to support one another. Why would they need to support one another if Islam teaches such dignity towards women? These two women went to Muhammad and Aisha pointed to the woman's bruise. Everyone say bruise. bruise. The bruise was as green as her scarf. Did you all hear that? The bruise was as green as her scarf. And what was Muhammad's reply? Did he condemn the woman beater? No. Did he say you shouldn't bruise the women? No. Did he say you should use a tooth stick? No. What did he do? He said that the woman is a liar, the man is not impotent, and before she can divorce this man that she doesn't want to live with, he must have sex with her. That is your great example, Mr. Brown. We have a better one in Jesus Christ. Jesus! If you want to contradict or attack the Christian faith, show me what Jesus said or the apostles said about how you should treat women. Anyway, Bob would not acknowledge the fact that his God is still is the God of the Old Testament. So whatever the Old Testament says, if you want to say it is fulfilled, at the end of the day, it was fulfilled with violence. Because in the Old Testament, there was nothing but violence from your God. Like in Leviticus 21.19, it says, If a priest's daughter defiles herself, becomes a prostitute, she disgraces her father, she must be burnt in the fire. And that was ordered by his God, Jesus. Because they believe he is the same, right? So if he, now he comes to the New Testament as a pacifier, which doesn't make sense because in the Old Testament he was a violent God. Yep. So now he wants to point out violence in the Quran. Oh boo hoo hoo. There's so much violence in the Bible from your God. Let's address those. And Bob, would you would you um would you condemn those verses that your God ordered for those killings of those babies and children? And like the order in Leviticus or Numbers 32, the taking of the slaves. 16,000 sex slaves that were taken in numbers. Do you condemn those verses that came down from your God? So, ladies and gentlemen, what did he do? He simply said, your book has violence towards women in it. But did you hear him quote a single verse? No. No. He quoted Old Testament scripture and he said that it's the same God. Yes, I affirm the God of the Old Testament is also the God of the New Testament. The God of the Old Covenant 
is the God of the new covenant. But God established a new covenant in his Messiah, Jesus Christ. Amen. And how should men and women live in the new covenant? Let me quote to you a new covenant passage and compare it to the text of the Quran we heard earlier. Listen. It says this. No. Because of immoralities, each man is to have a whole, sorry, each man is to have his own wife and each woman is to have her own husband. One man, one wife. But in Islam, a man can marry four wives, but a woman can't marry four men. Does that sound like equality? No. But the Bible teaches one man, one woman. Why? because they are equal, and this is the best structure for stability in society. The husband must fulfill his duty to his wife. Did you all hear that? Yes. He must fulfill his duty to his wife, and likewise also the wife to her husband. Does this all sound very egalitarian so far? Yes, it does. The wife does not have authority over her own body. Shock horror. But listen to the next line. But no, the husband has authority over his body. Likewise. But the wife does. Stop depriving one another except by agreement. Everyone say agreement. Agreement, agreement is between two parties. That means that the woman has the right to say no. But in Islam, a man is above a woman. A man can beat a woman. A man can marry multiple wives. That is adultery. That is fornication. Muhammad commanded sin because the commandment said, you should not commit adultery. But Muhammad commands adultery. And just to prove what a horrendous example he was, Muhammad himself couldn't even stay with four wives. He had upwards of 11 wives. So he couldn't even follow his own teaching. Over to you, Mr. Brown. Thank you very much. Now, God wants to talk about um, multiple wives. Well, David and many of the prophets had multiple wives. And if you want to wow. if you want to discount that, you should talk about your own Old Testament where the prophets had multiple wives themselves. And the other thing is, I think you're a bit jealous about the multiple wives. But we're talking about something else. Right. You are talking about uh, violence, right? In the New Testament, in the second coming, Jesus says, Bring those enemies of mine who did not want me to be king over them. Bring them here in front of me and slay them. And who are those enemies? Those who do not believe Jesus to be God. The men, women and children will be slain in the second coming of Jesus when the Jews and the rest of the world do not accept him as to be king. And that's a fact. They say that in your Bible, Bob. Right? I gave it back to you, Bob, and I think we're finished with that one. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, you can see how quickly Mr. Brown has run out of bullets. <laughs> and do you know why? Because the example of Jesus and the apostles is far above that false prophet Muhammad. Everyone say false prophet. There we go. Notice the wannabe jihadis. The wannabe gangsters. Don't say that, bro. He is a false prophet. False prophet. And here's why. False prophet. 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 So, ladies and gentlemen. So, ladies and gentlemen. This is what the Quran teaches. Notice he pointed out about slavery in the Old Testament. Let us quote his Quran. Forbidden to you for marriage are women whom are already married, except those slaves whom your right hands possess. Everyone ex say except. except. Those slaves your right hands possess. So the Quran teaches that you can have sex with married slaves. 
That means that slavery is instituted in the Quran, adultery is instituted in the Quran, and rape is instituted in the Quran. Do you honestly believe that a woman who has just seen her tribe, her people destroyed, would want to have sex with those who captured her? That is what Maham institutes. That is what the Quran institutes. And the Muslims don't want to deal with it. They just want to change the topic. You'll see it just now. Go on. So God wants to talk about sex slavery. And again, I refer back to your God. Because in your, your God in the Old Testament gave the order to take the Amalekites over 16,000 of them. And I will ask Bob, does he condemn those verses or does he condone them? And I would like to ask Bob as well, how old were those girls that were taken as sex slaves? Over 16,000 of them ordered by your God to take. And for you to say now, a few thousand years later, that's wrong for a Muslim to do it. Your God sanctioned it. A few thousand years. Did you hear him? To take over Did you hear him? Of them. So now, Bob, explain to me. And I think we leave out this, Bob, yeah? You can have your last saying, and I feel I want to talk about a different subject. No, we're not changing subject. I'm going to talk to, about Gainigo to talk. It, if you want to walk away and talk on another we'll topic, you can. Another topic, it's terrorism. Right, okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, did you all hear him slip up? Yes. He said, and for you to say a few thousand years later that it is wrong for Muslims to do it. That's in 2020. He just said it. That I, in 2020, am a hypocrite for saying that it is wrong for Muslims to take sex slaves. That is what he said. And why did he say it? Because his Quran injunctions it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let me leave you with this thought because Mr. Brown wants to end this debate. And if Mr. Brown wants to go away and talk about something else he can do, but I'm then going to talk about a different topic. But if we have demonstrated that the Quran and the Hadith teach injustice, teach evil, teach immorality, then is it right to stand against Islam? Yes. Is it right to defy Islam? Yes. Is it right to seek the end of Islam? Yes. That is why, Christians, we say, Das Volt! Das Volt! Das Volt! Das Volt! Das Volt! Stand against Islam! It's called extremism! Christians are the most extreme. You notice this. He is provoking you guys to hate. To shed the teaching you to love, right? Where is the love? There was nothing but hate that came out. Show us a single video of a Christian man punching a Muslim woman. Not one. 16,000 verses were taken captive. Yet the Amalekites did not condone it under, under the guidance of Moses, right? He did not condone it, he did not condemn it, he condoned it. He went around it, wanted to talk about Islam. Now he's got you all riled up. I want to ask you something, Christians. If you're all about love, how come you got all full of hate? Where Let me tell you. You start full of hate. Let me like deal with this. You just should not get radicalized. Let me deal with this, ladies and gentlemen. People like him. Let me deal with this. Okay, thank you, Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown, thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, I want to be clear that hatred is not enough for victory. That if you hate Muslims, you will defeat yourselves. However, there is nothing wrong with hating an evil idea. There is nothing wrong with standing against an evil ideology. Ladies and gentlemen, the way that you defeat Islam is not to give your heart over to hatred, but it is 
to love something better than Islam. To love something better than Islam. Something stronger than Islam. And that thing that you must love is the thing that has defeated Islamic armies before. Not once, not twice, not three times, but four times. We have defeated Islam. The thing that you must love is the church, the root and the foundation of European civilization, the basis of our identity, our language, our culture, our traditions, our customs, our sense of morality, our legal system, our political system. All of it has been colored by the Christian faith. Perfect. And a strong, assertive, confident, no-nonsense Christianity can defeat the Islamists that are killing people in Paris, killing people in Spain, in Germany, in Italy, in Sweden, in Netherlands, in England, in South Sudan, in, South Sudan, in North Nigeria, in Syria, in Iraq, in Pakistan, in Armenia, in Kosovo, Serbia, that excluded the Christians from Northern Cyprus, that are killing Christians in the Philippines. The church can unite us in a global confederacy where Christians in every part of the world stand together against the common network of Islamists that many of the Muslims in this park are the apologists for. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't defeat Islam by hating Muslims. We defeat Islam by loving ourselves by loving the church, by loving the teachings of the apostles and the prophets and building our lives on them and standing up to the Islamists in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh, you can Perfect. Bob, can I leave you with this? Go on. Right. Bob, Bob talks a lot of hate, as you can see. There's a lot of anger and hate in his speech. But I truly believe, I truly believe, love can conquer hate. But I see no love from the Christians. When I go to your, when I go to your live chat, all I see is hate, nothing but hate. But I truly believe that love can conquer. I know for a fact, Bob hates me because I'm a Muslim. I love you, Bob, Mr. Brown. But Bob, I love you. I love you, Mr. Brown. I love all the Christians. Even though you hate me, even though you wanna, you wanna crucify me, right? But Bob, I still love you, and I believe love can conquer hate. You gotta shake my hand and give me a hug, Bob. Have a look on Jesus, brother. So, ladies and gentlemen, we must, in our minds, be clear that the the Muslim community sits a co upon a kaleidoscope. Some Muslims are just cultural Muslims. Some Muslims are liberal Muslims wanting to reform Islam. Some Muslims are conservative Muslims. Some Muslims are traditional Muslims. And some Muslims are radical Islamists who recently went into a church in Nice and beheaded three of my brothers and sisters. A 70-year-old included amongst them. Oh, what great lions they are for Allah. Wow. That they should kill old ladies at prayer. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, is it right to stand up against these terrorists? Yes. Yes. It is, do not let them browbeat you into shyness. Don't let them use the language of love to drill you into apathy and pacifism and idleness. We are in an existential fight, not just for our civilization, but for the world. Perfect. And we must rally under the cross to fight valiantly as the soldiers of Christ against sin, the world, and the devil. 
and the devil is what inspired Mohammed. It was the devil that inspired Mohammed to permit his followers not, to rape that's 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 women. That's 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 it was the that's devil lie, lie, that inspired lie, Mohammed lie, to have lie, sex lie, with a child. Lie, it was the don't devil lie, lie, that inspired lie, Mohammed, lie, was inspiring Mohammed to make Christians second-class citizens. And ladies and gentlemen, make no mistake, if the Islamists win, the kind of harassment that you are seeing in the park, you will see in the streets of London, you will see in the streets of Bradford, you will see in the streets of Leeds. Oh, relax You're yourself, man. Is that, is, that, is that what Jesus taught you? Yeah, is that what Jesus back. taught you? Stand up for my brother, get back. Jesus taught you? Get back! Don't touch me, bro. Don't get near him, you can smack him and hold. Yeah. Just go away. No, no, no. We're just provoking people. Just provoking people. Why weren't you telling him about being emotional? I'm just saying, you know, you saw me talking So, ladies and gentlemen, let's be clear. Modine also assaulted Hatun. On the same day she was punched in the face, it's on camera. He taps her. That's what he did. Afghan, this guy tried to steal somebody's phone. So he tried to steal somebody's phone. He also assaulted Hatun. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is what will happen if Islam dominates? What happened last week without any disturbance? I just want to condemn what happened last week. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What happened last week? I condemn it. Yeah. Every Muslim here will condemn those sort of acts in the park. Many of them Every cried Muslim. out, Allahu Akbar. Every Muslim condemn it. But I get this. Wait. I also condemn. Wait. I also condemn. I'll get to France one second. I also condemn that. Bob and many other Christians, instead of detaining the gentleman, that guy who hit a hatun, they, de they decided to part themselves, to take the authority upon themselves and start that's beating him. this guy. If the other him. people did not intervene, if, if they would have crucified this guy. One second, guy, my brother. Now, Bob wants to talk about terrorism. Bob, why is it the fact when a Christian, walk, when a right wing Christian walks into a church, Kills a fight to black An ethno nationalist. terrorism. Why? In 2019, church massacre, church shooting, two people were fatally killed in a church by a white nationalist. Thank you. Not a Christian. Not a Christian. Which is why, ladies and gentlemen, we Christians must stand against the ethno nationalists. The ethno nationalists are the enemies of the church. They kill Christians. If you stand up to Islamists because of their terrorism, you must stand up to ethno nationalists because of their terrorism. 2015, the Telegraph, just because Christian. So, ladies and gentlemen, to try and de-escalate the situation, I'm going to move over there. If you want to listen to them, stay here. If you want to listen to me, come over here. Come on, Bob. Form a circle. Form a circle. If he wants to be an agitator, let him force his way through you. Sorry, bro. I didn't, I didn't realise. So, ladies and gentlemen, today... Okay. Sorry, guys, I've got to give it a break for 10 minutes. So you'll hear my voice when I start again. Have a lovely day.